This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron here on the Twitter, and I'm a video producer here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, around IndieWrestling.us, IWC, RWA, and a whole bunch of other projects here. And this is a show where we talk with uh, pro wrestlers, people people around pro wrestling, about the love of pro wrestling. Uh, and uh, of course, you can check out all of our past interviews and everything over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Look up the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Google Play Music, and video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook and youtube page and we're often going live there on the facebook page as well keep an eye on the events so you can see who we're going to be talking to because you never know where we're going to schedule people um all over the place i'm really excited because we haven't done one um that has not been pittsburgh or ohio based for a while of course you know uh, you know thank you to everybody that's been coming into the studio over the last couple of months of, as we've opened this thing up uh to to them but uh but i want to make sure we're getting back to getting around the country and there's great talent all over the place and this is one that was recommended by our friend brandon that's been a great contributor to the show uh in the chat rooms and everything every week so thank you very much for that and you guys can uh, let us know who you want us to talk to at good times at wrestling mayhem and uh and we'll do our best to get uh people scheduled and, and uh see if they're uh uh cool enough to get have a chat with and this guy definitely made the cut um he is the connoisseur he is niles plonk joining us on the phone line today how you doing sir um, it's pronounced Planque. Oh, I'm sorry. Planque? He's Planque. That, he's yes. that, it's is, very classy. It's very classy. Is that French? I don't know. I, I, fa- uh, I failed French class. It's it's a mix of different things that are classy. So French, American, uh, you name it. Okay. There's some Italy in there, I'm sure. Italian. Okay. 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 You, you look like you could be a mix of all those things, perhaps. I, I'm a mutt, for sure. That is... <laughs> That is for sure. So thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for thanks for taking the time to be on. Um, so we we like to do a little bit of a get to know you uh, question to, get, to start start things off here for people who may have haven't heard of you. Um, what is your earliest memory of pro wrestling? Oh gosh, my earliest memory of pro wrestling is um, I grew up in a small rural area in the middle of Missouri, the northwestern part of Missouri. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember I have a twin brother, I have an older brother, and my older brother was a big wrestling fan. So I remember probably as little as four or five years old watching WrestleMania. And, you know, back then there wasn't, um, there wasn't any internet. It was all, uh, and out in the rural country, we didn't have cable or anything like that. We had these, this gigantic satellite dish. And um, we had to call the pay-per-view place, and then we had to have one person stand outside and the other person relay at the door into to my dad, who was adjusting. We had to adjust the satellite to pick up the image so it was as clear as we could get it after we ordered this thing. And uh, so I remember, I remember that specifically. That was just every time there was a wrestling show, and there was, you know, there was only four pay per views back then with WWF. Uh, and I remember doing that four times a year. And uh, so that's my earliest memory of wrestling is is watching it at a young age, uh, mostly because my older brother was a huge fan. And then through the course of us watching it, I became a big fan as well. That's awesome. So yeah, that really was like even even then, it's like it, it's kind of like the the rabbit ears. Hey, make sure you don't move your hand, you know, to make sure it comes in kind of idea, which is actually how I watched my wrestling back in the day. Yeah, you know, it was funny. There's there's a few times, uh, like if it was raining or a thunderstorm or even really just bad weather, overcast, uh, we couldn't get it at all. So we had to end up uh, actually watching the replay like the next night or the ne- night after that, which was, uh, you know, it was like nerve wracking for you at that age. Like, you know, you, you wanted to watch it right then and there. The only saving grace to that is they didn't have message boards. They didn't have, you know, dirt sheets and things like that would, that would post the results. You couldn't find that stuff. So like when you watched it live, literally you had to wait till the next episode, uh, on TV to really kind of get a recap. And they were really good at not, you know, recapping everything immediately so that people could watch the re 
replay and get back into it. So, you know, this is pre raw and everything like that too. Uh, so it was, it was really neat. It was really a cool time to think about, you know, where the industry was and where it is now, where you can find results as soon as the match happens. Uh, and in some cases, whenever it's uh, preempted, you can find it ahead of what you see on TV. So, uh, really cool. Uh, a little bit more of a, a magic back then, I want to say with it, a lot more uh, mystique to it, which was, which was great for a kid like me growing up with it. Mm-hmm. And he had to be pretty hardcore, especially on the country like that, to be able to get it that way. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was definitely, it wasn't, you know, the funny thing is, is my dad is, uh, you know, he's an old farmer, so he, uh, he will never admit to liking wrestling, but he would be up there cheering and whatnot too. So, you know, he's like a closet case pro wrestling fan. So I, I think he still even watches it every once in a while now. Um, it just, it was just a funny dynamic that, uh, out in the middle of nowhere in rural Missouri, we have, uh, there's WrestleMania is being played and we have all our friends over and we're eating, chips and salsa and you know pizza and whatnot and having a good time so hey go from that and obviously you know pretty into it how did you go from uh uh playing the satellite dish and, and and getting into it then to to deciding you want to get into the ring well um you know it was it's kind of a journey thing so you know once you once you fall in love with wrestling uh or fall in love with anything there's there's a part of you that wants to be a part of that somehow you know and, and you know um you know, I was a fan, so I was happy being a fan, but I was also to a point where I was really comfortable with how, you know, my body worked and how um, I could move. I'd been in martial arts since I was 11. Uh, we took, my brother and I took a hop keto class, and we still teach one today when we have time. Um, and so, like, I knew about how, you know, my body would react. I wasn't a traditional, you know, I played basketball and football and things like that, but I wasn't one of those big sports nuts. I I liked wrestling. So most of the time we would uh, get in trouble at our our martial arts class because we'd end up doing suplexes or or body slams or something like that during the the breaks and stuff. We did a lot of push-ups for doing that stuff too. But uh, I knew, like, I wanted to do something with it, but honestly it didn't really, it wasn't something I pursued because I just didn't know what it took to do that, you know, I growing up and I, I only watched WWF growing up because I, I didn't know anything about AWA or WCW or anything. I mean, I knew of WCW, but I never, never watched it. I didn't have cable, so we didn't have access to all that stuff. So I only knew WWF. And so like you look at the guys in WWF, especially back there in the late eighties, early nineties, you know, jacked up huge guys and I'm 140 pounds. And uh, at 16, I'm like, yeah, there's no way I'm going to do this. Because I just, you know, it was a reality issue for me. But uh, eventually, through the course of the years, my karate instructor, um, he, I think he got fed up with us doing all those wrestling moves. And he introduced me to uh, an old-time wrestler in St. Joseph, Missouri, named Sonny Myers. Uh, Sonny Myers was a 14-time Central States champion for the NWA. A real old-timer, started wrestling in the 40s. Uh, 50, 60, that was his run, and he became a referee for the NWA. After that, uh, wrestled a lot for Gus Karras uh, around the area, and then Bob Geigel when Bob Geigel took over the uh, promotion. But he introduced me to Sonny, who was, you know, 77, 78 at the time when I met him. And Sonny started training me in this little garage in St. Joe, and I picked up on the moves really quick and the move part was easy for me because it was it was similar to what we did in martial arts a lot of rolling falling back falls breaks things like that wrist locks um it was the psychology part that took a while for me to to get down uh from going from so to speak a shoot to to a work so uh but i i look back at that and it was um i just kind of everything kind of opened up at the right time. And I just kind of step, kept walking through, you know, I, I can't really say that I had a plan. I didn't, I just kind of stumbled into it as I went and, uh, it turned out pretty good. Awesome. Uh, so, so this, uh, this idea of the connoisseur that you are now, is, is this, uh, was this an initial idea when you, when you came out the gate and, and had your first few matches or is this something that kind of came later for you? Oh no, this came much, much later. In fact, this only came in the last, uh, less than a year, honestly. Um, so the first, I, I started wrestling in 1999. Mm-hmm. So I started training at, at 16 and a half, uh, and have been going since there. So 
Uh, I wrestled a lot around the Indies as my real name, as uh, Crow, as you know, just a couple different things. I did a biking gimmick for a while, mm-hmm. but I never was big on on gimmicks because I was trained by an old timer who, you know, was pretty much just go in there and and work a good match and don't worry about your character. So, um, that was something that was was hard for me to get into. You know, we didn't do a lot of promos. I didn't have a lot of work in that. And then I would say in the last couple of years. Um, because on a side of wrestling, I actually own a winery and I'm a winemaker in, in, uh, Missouri. Uh, I wanted to implement a part of me that's not a wrestler into my wrestling. So, you know, they always say the best gimmicks are the gimmicks that are yourself, uh, an aspect of yourself multiplied by like 500, right? So, um, the wine maker slash wine owner gimmick was something that started a couple of years ago and it was it wasn't anything special back then it was uh me experimenting with different things kind of going by i put vintage into as a moniker in front of my name and i worked for a couple different promotions around the midwest um this is my real name but vintage craig keesman uh, i would i would work as different uh trying to implement some different things in there like doing some stomps then call it a grape stomp and, and whatnot <laughs> And it really wasn't until um, January of this year when the National Wrestling League started up in Kansas City that I fully adopted uh, the, the Niles Plonquet character. So uh, as part of uh, our contract, they, they wanted us to have character. That was part of their, their thing. So we had a, a meeting and discussed it, and we decided on the name Niles Plonk. Uh, I had like a bunch of ideas and it, it kind of similar to like I was saying when I started wrestling, just things kind of opened up and I fell into them. Like the way that uh, I, I did our entrance, uh, the way that I, I walked and I spoke in promos and stuff, it all just kind of came really natural and on the spot. There wasn't any, a lot of pre-planning to it. It was just flowed from what I was doing. And so uh, since that time, that's pretty much all I've been been doing is the Niles Plunk gimmick and I love it. It's like the best thing I ever, I wish I would have done it 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. It's definitely something that sticks out a bit and, and we're playing a little bit of your, uh, your, your promo. Uh, looks like it was at a bar where you're looking at the wine list and, and seeing your entrance here, uh, against, uh, another friend of the show, Gary J actually, uh, and, and NWL. Um, so it, it's definitely something that sticks out a bit and I love that it's like a, a build on your character. Um, so is this like what's the reaction been to this so far? Uh, reaction's been, I mean, for for where I'm at and what I've been doing, the reaction's huge. It's the best best reaction I've had from anything I've done. And I've been told throughout the years that you know my works as a wrestler is really good, and and people like to have me on the card. But there's not a lot of that interesting aspect to what I do, and I get that. Um, you know, a lot of great wrestlers just don't they don't never find that right gimmick. You know, they never find the thing. They may be the best worker in the world, but they don't have anything that that, that cements them as a, a, a memorable character. And uh, this character that I have has been like everything that I would want in a character to do. Things have just opened up for me immensely on me. One, I think it's because it's so unique. There's not really anything in wrestling that deals with wine or a, a winemaker. Um, and Two is it's you know it's just kind of a, a an easy gimmick for people they even if they're not familiar with like the wine industry or not familiar with uh, you know the wine business uh, they can they can see a character like Niles Plunk and say like yeah this guy's a, a typical wine snob that you would stereotype in any you know movie or any any type of uh, stereotype role you know. And that's right. It, it, it kind of alluded to that, like because I feel like I feel like the wine connoisseur is already kind of a heel. Like I have a lot of friends in the beer, uh, I guess the craft beer kind of world, and then they talk about beer snobbery and things like that. So, which could be another character for your tag team partner could be a beer snob. Sure. Yeah, and we've we've discussed <laughs> doing things like that. Like we've discussed having, you know, um, a family member come in that was, uh, you know, he's like the. <laughs> the black sheep of the family of the Plonke family, and he does beer, and so he's a little bit more, you know, like redneck or, or whatever you would associate with the, the beer crowd. And so I'm, I'm kind of ashamed, but I still use him because he's my, you know, he's my kin type thing. And you know, there's a lot of things, fun things that we could go in contrast with it. 
the best thing is that um, being based out of Kansas City is there's Kansas City is a huge beer town. Uh, Missouri is. I mean, that's Anheuser Busch is in St. Louis. Uh, we got Boulevard Brewing Company in Kansas City, which are are two very big breweries, and uh, that gives me so much ammunition because primarily uh, Kansas City is known for barbecue and beer. So kind of do the pretentious jerk and tell people they're unclassy, unsophisticated, et cetera. It's just very easy to work a crowd like this versus if I was in California, it, it, they'd probably look at me as a baby face because that's their industry out there. So mm-hmm. uh, definitely um, neat how it's all folded together and exactly where I'm at. It works really well. That's great. That's awesome. Um so, so, uh, what is the kind of, you, obviously you've been in this, uh, this a while. Um, what is the best and worst thing about indie wrestling for you so far? Oh, <laughs> there's so many uh, on both sides. Um, <laughs> you know, and it, a lot of it depends. Like there's, I, I think it, it ever changes too. Uh, and it changes based on circumstance. So like, let's take travel, for instance, um, driving eight hours through Kansas, um, is not as enjoyable as driving eight hours through, you know, um, another location, driving, driving South or whatnot. Um, it's just, it's a different thing. So, and, and a lot of it depends on who's with you, you know, traveling with two of your best buds is doesn't matter how many miles you go. It's always great. Uh, driving by yourself is sometimes a nightmare, even if it's an hour away. So I'd say travel, um, was probably the worst thing for me as an indie wrestler. Uh, the other thing is like consistency, finding a, you know, promotions that, uh, treat the business in a professional manner as a business instead of as a, you know, kind of a part-time hobby. Um, I absolutely despise that. I mean, I know, I understand that most of us as indie wrestlers, uh, do this because we love it. So it is kind of a hobby. We don't make a living off of it, so to speak. Um, and if we do, it's very hard. But at the same sense, I'm still, I've always been ingrained that this business is a business and it's professional. And so um, you always treat your business, even if it's a hobby, uh, as a, as your profession. And, um, I, you know, a lot of promotions don't do that. A lot of workers don't do that. So that's a frustrating part of it. Um, it it's evolving. So, you know, wrestling is always changing and evolving. And, and I'm, I'm an old school minded guy trained by an old school guy. So, you know, sometimes that's harder for me to grasp some of the newer, uh, concepts in wrestling. Some, and some things I won't ever grasp. So, um, and that, that's okay. Cause I, I'm a firm believer that wrestling always comes back around to the base, the meat and potatoes, and everything, you know, the basics, uh, will always, be the, the go-to and then it'll just evolve into something else off of that. So tell me a little bit about, uh, NWO. This looks like it's pretty much your home promotion. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Um, I still work occasionally outside the NWL for a few other promotions that I've worked throughout the years, but, um, NWL is pretty much where I, I want to go. That's where I'm signed. I got a contract with them. Um, you know, they're, they're the place, they're the only place I'll, I'll generally work as, as plonk. Um, but the main reason is that, you know, they have a lot invested in my character and I have a lot invested with them. So I don't want to ruin that, uh, going out. And the, the NWO has been, I was actually having a discussion with my friend the other day on this. Uh, it's everything that a wrestler could want. And it's so close to me. So, uh, one of the, the great aspects of the NWL is that we're on broad, broadcast TV in about six or seven different cities throughout the state, which is great. That's huge for us. And so, and we travel to a lot of those places. We do a TV taping every two weeks and then we're doing, um, you know, for lack of better words, house shows in some of the surrounding towns. And they've just started that this summer. And so that's been great to, to roll into a town that we've never been there with minimal advertising, but they've seen it on TV. So they already know who your character is. They already know uh, that. So you don't have to go through the, the uh, initial, um, aspect of, you know, I'm trying to introduce who I am to a crowd. Uh, and then we can get into some wrestling. You can kind of just get right into some wrestling, uh, with them, which is great. Um, again, it's, it's about everything. They have a state of the art training facility. Uh, they set up in Kansas city. Uh, they do everything really well. Their production on everything is great. It's nice to have a place that does, uh, videos for you. They take you know, they have professional pictures done for us. Uh, you know, it's, it's pretty much 
uh, everything again, everything could want in an indie company. Uh, and, and it's freaking, it's really close to me. So that's great. It's about an hour from where I live. So that's even better. That's awesome. You guys can check that out because again, it's, 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 it's a promotion I hadn't heard a whole bunch of, uh, about, uh, fightkc.com or nwlead.com. Uh, and again, just, there's a lot out there. So, and I'm always big on promotions that you can access online. Right. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, so, so the, you it, can, you, you can experience something in, in, our, in another, uh, region than, than you maybe have access to. Oh, sorry. I was over you. Go ahead. Oh, no, that's nice to say. Yeah, they're, they're all their episodes that they've had since January, and they have literally hundreds of, of matches on there now, uh, are on YouTube, on their National Wrestling League uh, channel on YouTube. Uh, if you're fortunate to, to be in the area, you can catch them at, at different TV stations like 38th the Spot in Kansas City, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of smaller you know franchise broadcasts places like KQ2 in St. Joseph, Missouri. Uh, they're in Springfield now. And they keep adding cities, too. That's the great thing is that broadcast television is kind of an un, uncharted territory for wrestling now for a long time. Everybody's on cable. You know, the big guys are on cable and pushing for that. So it leaves open the local area for that. And that's been something that's been really successful for the NWL. And it's again, it's just really nice to, to go to these towns that have the TV and uh, they already know who you are right right away the first time we're there so that's a a huge thing any 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 guy out there will know that that's that's a huge step to uh to getting known and getting your character over that's awesome uh so is there anybody that you're kind of keeping an eye on these days any uh particular promotion or 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 something that happened on tv or any wrestlers uh, on the indies or nationally you're kind of keeping an eye on that that kind of has your attention these days oh yeah i mean there's uh there's tons of guys i mean there's so much great talent out there today. Um, you know, honestly, the, the one that, that uh, and, and this is a, you know, a bucket list thing for me too, uh, is uh, I want to work with Cody Rhodes sometime. He's uh, He's been in the wrestling news lately. Him and uh, Stephen the Miller are doing a winery or doing some sort of partnership with the winery. So I think it would be a perfect opportunity for either the NWL or someone else to have Niles Plunk versus Cody Rhodes wait, wait, for wait, a battle wait. of... Oh, wait, 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 wait! You tell me, Cody Rhodes and Stephen Amell, the Arrow, is do are doing a winery together? Uh, they're doing something with the winery, some sort of co uh, production or co promotion of it. So it, that's a cool thing because uh, oh, wow. again, the wine wine industry hasn't really been uh, utilized in wrestling. So no. you know, as far as the you know, and I've had a lot of people call me like, "Hey, they're taking your gimmick." I'm like they're not <laughs> taking my gimmick. <laughs> At all, it, it's it's just an aspect of it, and I'm excited about it because it, it opens so many doors for me. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the, the argument is, you know, the same man didn't take away from uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and Stone Cold Steve Austin didn't take away from the same man because they both drank beer. You know, mm-hmm. it was it was they're two different characters, they had two different roles, and it, it they both got over to their own regards. So, just one way more than the other one. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, if uh, you know, if people want to check out more of uh, the connoisseur out there, uh, Niles Plonke, where, where can they find you online? They can find me on Facebook, on uh, Twitter, on Instagram. Uh, you know, any of those things. Just type in Niles Plonk or National Wrestling League. You'll you'll pull up links to to both of them from there. Uh, our website is nwleague.com and it's nwleague.com and it has a really nice roster pages on there it's got all our entrance videos it's got all our videos on there really well put together site it's got links to all of our social media apps on there uh i'm most active on twitter as niles plonk um so if you get a chance add me on twitter first and then you can kind of link to the instagram and uh, facebook after that so there you go. Thank you so much for joining us here, and uh, I hope you guys have been able to uh, crack open and sniff some wine during this uh, during this interview as well. And I really appreciate it. Uh, if you if you do, let us know uh, at Mayhem Show on the Twitter, on Wrestling Mayhem Show on the Facebook. We have a great Facebook group where we talk about uh, wrestling on all different uh, all different levels. Sometimes video games too. It kind of gets all over the place. And on, of course, let us know if you have uh, anybody you want us to talk to. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com or on any of those platforms and subscribe to the show. Uh, and until next time, please 
well, support the wine industry and support indie wrestling. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.